Former Congressman Ron Paul believes the U.S. should stay out of the Ukraine. Here's what he told RT earlier today. Ab absolutely. I don't think we have any business there. Uh, the Europeans are involved. The Russians are involved. I uh, think it would be nice that we consider the Ukrainians. Uh, it's their civil strife, their civil war, and deciding who's going to run that country should be left to them. Unfortunately, others get involved, and it seems like uh, it's irresistible for the United States to be involved. But uh, the majority of the American people right now are starting to agree with me on this issue. There's no sense in us getting involved. Uh, we certainly don't want to send troops in. Right now, we're out of money. So this idea that we're going to start bailing out Ukraine uh, is a total nonsense. Uh, I, don't, I don't see how we can afford that, nor should, uh, sh nor should we do it. Speaking of a bailout, the EU, the news today, is offering $15 billion dollars in aid to the Ukraine. What do you think about that? Is that the right move? Well, I think that's silly. I think it's just as silly as if we offered it, because in many ways, that's what we're doing. We're offering it, because the dollar still is pretty strong compared to the other currencies. Uh, the Europeans right now have to bail out some of their own countries, like Greece and Italy and places like that. Uh, they have to go and borrow the money. We're very much involved. I think their main goal is to bail out the banks, because uh, I'm sure the uh, Ukrainians owe a lot of money to banks, so that's why there's an interest involved. But but if $15 billion is coming from the e EU, it's also coming from the United States. They're probably also talking about the IMF. Uh, and the money's just not there. It makes no sense whatsoever. It just props up bad investments. And, you know, the one irony of all this is let's say they do send some money to Ukraine, and, and the EU and the United States are supposed to be fighting with Russia right now. Well, who knows? Maybe the money will go to the Ukraine, and they'll pay their bills and pay for the gas that, they, that they're getting from Russia. So that would be one irony, and maybe the bankers have that set up. But uh, the whole thing uh, makes no sense whatsoever from an economic view point, from a political viewpoint, it's always vying for, for controls, and I think that's what's going on. Certainly, the EU, the U.S. sees some value in doing this if they're going to make this kind of uh, contribution. want to ask you, I mean, what do you think America's interests are in Ukraine? Okay, American interest in the Ukraine, uh, of course, I think it's financial and it's, it's control, it's uh, which way Ukraine's going to go. Is it going to go east or west? And they don't believe in uh, self-determination. They always want, uh, America always wants their hand in things. They have an empire to build and defend. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's, uh, it, it's a mess. I don't think we should have an interest. If we did, it should be that uh, we should encourage uh, the Ukrainians to solve their problems. And once they have a government, we should be open to working with them and talking with them and being friends with them and trade with them. But no subsidies and no military and no instruction and don't tell people what to do. That's how we've gotten ourselves into so much trouble. And uh, this whole idea that it's argued that uh, we have to, uh, you know, that, uh, that the, the Russians are being blamed for violation of sovereignty. Well, that may be up for an argument, but uh, for us to lecture anybody about violating sovereignty, uh, what about the sovereignty of Iraq and Afghanistan and Yemen, Yemen and North Africa? And we're uh, constantly being involved, Pakistan, and the use of drone missiles. So uh, I think that uh, what I'm talking about is completely opposite of what the Republicans and Democrats have talked about, of this intervention, this compulsion to be involved and to expand and protect the American empire. That's where we're getting into trouble, and I don't see any benefit coming from us trying to tell other people what to do, whether it's, I don't think it's good for our national security, and certainly isn't good for our financial financial security. Mr. Paul, some conservatives say the president looks weak right now, that he's not being tough enough when it comes to Russia. What do you say to that very vocal part of the Republican Party? You know, I hear that, that he, he's looking weak. Uh, I happen not to be a fan of the president, but uh, if he wants to back off, and that is his goal, they said the same thing about him when he, he, they said he looked weak because he didn't uh, end up bombing Syria. 
Uh, and for whatever reason, he backed off mainly because the American people said, don't, don't do it. But uh, I think uh, I don't consider that weakness. Sometimes it takes strength to stand up against the bullies who want to go and bomb people and believe that's part of our foreign policy. So uh, I, don't, I don't think it has anything to do with weakness and, and, and uh, strength. I think it takes a lot of strength and courage to resist those people who pressure, whether it's from the military industrial complex or for some other special interest that we're supposed to be engaged. So if he were truly backing off, I would say that takes strength. Uh, I don't think it's that quite that clear uh, because uh, so far under this administration there has been a lot of intervention involved, uh, the use of uh, drones and uh, our presence in uh, Afghanistan. So uh, I think it's a false idea to condemn the president because uh, if he doesn't want to take a risk in going into an unnecessary war, uh, I don't consider that a sign of weakness. Mr. Paul, your position is very clear. You advocate small government. Anti-intervention is, is what you, you advocate. And another congressman that advocates that is a former Fox News, uh, Congressman Dennis Kucinich, and he went on Fox News last night and discussed this conflict in the Ukraine. I want to take a listen first to what he said on the network last night. The U.S. has been involved covertly and behind the scenes with the CIA, with the National Endowment for Democracy and USAID to stir up trouble in Ukraine. Just want to ask you to respond to that. Well, I didn't quite get all of that, but he said something about the CIA and others stirring up trouble, and, and I think the gist of that is something I would agree with, because, uh, you know, we have special forces and the CIA involved in uh, a lot of countries. We have 800 bases around the world. We're in 130 countries. We're always involved, it seems, in somebody else's election, and uh, we preach democracy. We finally got democracy, uh, theoretically, you know, in Egypt. Uh, there was an election, and, of course, we didn't like the person they elected. So we said, let's go back to the military. So I don't, I don't like hypocrisy, and I don't think Dennis Kucinich likes hypocrisy. Uh, for us to preach uh, one thing, and at the same time, behind the scenes, uh, we're doing things to uh, stir up trouble for many, many different reasons. Now, I know that you say that Ukraine has the right to self-determination, that they should figure out that this is their conflict and they should work this out on their own. You think that the, U the U.S. should stay out. What do you think we should do in light of current events, what's happening over there with Russia invading? I mean, how do you think the U.S. should respond to that action? Well, that is, that is more complex because it involves long-term history, uh, what the association of uh, uh, Crimea and uh, Ukraine has been with Russia. Uh, their national security interests certainly are different. I would think that uh, sometimes uh, they say the accusation now is uh, Russia's position is, uh, you know, so aggressive and, and so horrible. But I was uh, wondering whether he might not have said, well, why don't we just ask George Bush, what would he do if uh, somebody did this to Guantanamo? You know, maybe they want to protect the base in Guantanamo. How would we react? And so I don't, I don't see that. But th that doesn't mean that I endorse it. The, what, the, the uh, convenient part about a non-interventionist pro-American foreign policy is that I don't have to make that determination because it is complex. But I do know that the people more local have more to say about it. Just geographically, I would assume that the Russians have a more justification being concerned about what's happening in their naval base in the Crimea uh, as, as compared to United, United States. And, uh, and for this reason, I, I think that uh, uh, there's the more the more the outsiders stay out of it, the fine. It would be nice if if someone if I could wave a wand and I tell the Russian, okay, just let the Ukrainians decide uh, what they want to do, and the Europeans and the Americans walk away from it. Fine and dandy, but that's not likely to happen. The only thing that I might have an influence, even though I'm not an official in government anymore, my advice would be that we should stay out of it and uh, not be a participant. If the Europeans uh, want to negotiate and, and deal with Russia, I think that's in their, in their backyard. But theoretically, uh, I like small government, small units of government, and self-determination. And if you had a referendum
referendum reflecting that, you might end up with three countries over there, maybe loosely tied together. Maybe they would have a confederation, but maybe you would have an east and west Ukraine, and you might have Crimea, and, uh, and they could go their own way. Uh, I, I would think that uh, we should always like to see smaller units of government. I loved it when uh, the Soviet Union broke up, uh, when uh, 12 other countries just, you know, seceded from the Soviet Union. So I want the right of secession and the breaking up and self-determination and emphasize local government and uh, the world would be better off for it. Unfortunately, money and politics and banking interests and militarism get involved and they get to control the strings of, uh, of government and and the people lose out on these issues. So often the people who have to fight the wars and die in these wars, uh, they, are, they are the victims. So it's the restraint of big government that is my goal. I think we would have less of these kind of problems around the world. That was former U.S. Representative Ron Paul.